Brothers and sisters, Brother John here with incredible news, with amazing news, with the news that will chase away your blues, brothers and sisters. God bless you today. It's a glorious day. It's a beautiful day. It doesn't matter if it's overcast and raining or sunshiny or windy. It doesn't matter. We're going home very, very soon. Information that I found yesterday that I was blown away by and I will uh, bring it up at this moment of time, is this. Um, let me get it. I got to pull it up because it was um, an article. Let's see. All right. This is the article, and I'm going to read it to you, brothers and sisters. First, it's in Israeli... Uh, the breaking Israeli news as of yesterday, May the 4th. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but this is the news. So here we go. On Friday morning, it was reported that U.S. President Trump's plan for a peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinian Authority, the PA, was revealed to Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman during his visit to Washington last week. According to the report, Israel will be called upon to relinquish four sections of Jerusalem that will serve as the capital of the newly formed Palestinian state. And we know that that's already a problem because God says, don't divide my land, right? Because if you do, it's not going to be good. At any rate, this is what's been going on and this is uh, what will start the time of Jacob's trouble and all of this. So let me continue. And, it's, and in its initial stages, the presidential peace plan will require Israel, Israel to cede from Jebel, uh, Merkabar, uh, Iswai, some of these, these are all Arab, this is the Arab majority sections of Jerusalem, okay? A Hebrew language news service reported on the newly revealed plan saying that it can be assumed that the transfer of these neighborhoods is the first stage in turning East Jerusalem into the capital of the PA. According to the report, the plan does not include the old city, which will be recognized as an uh, international territory, which is exactly what the Vatican wants, and it's even what the the Jews themselves are stating that when the Temple Mount is, uh, when the Temple is built, it'll be a temple, the third temple will be a temple for all nations, all right? So it's an international territory, all right? Which also brings the protection of the UN to that international zone, all right? This is all involved with all the connections with what this report is sharing. It has already been reported that the agreement Will, be, will include total U.S. support for Israel in anything concerning the Iranian nuclear weapons program. This is important. The U.S. will also support Israel in the international forum should Israel decide to act directly against Iran. The U.S. support will include substantial military aid, including advanced weaponry, should a conflict break out with Syria and Iran. It already is, brothers and sisters. It's already breaking out. The bunker bomb that went into uh, Syria the other day killed 18 Iranian soldiers. It's now a direct conflict with Iran. Iran will answer. So, Lieberman's office, of course, refused to, com to comment and the meeting, uh, on the meetings. Uh, and the U.S. officials categorically deny report of, uh, to the Jerusalem Post. All right. Well, this is the normal thing. When leaks come out, they don't want it out before it's time. So this is why they deny it. And obviously there will be something that's pretty close to what they're saying in this article. Angered over the U.S. Uh, recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital, PA officials have refused to meet with the U.S. representatives who have come to the region in recent months. Last month, uh, President Mahmoud Abbas said the PA will not accept any U.S. peace plan. Of course they're not going to. They're upset with, you know, 
the U.S. Uh, acknowledging Jerusalem as the undivided capital, and yet this peace plan is starting to divide it. Isn't that interesting? We honestly will not wait, this is a quote from Abbas, not wait for anything from them, and we will not accept anything from them, Abbas said at a conference in Ramallah last month. Here's the meat of the matter, brothers and sisters. The full peace plan, which at this point of the finishing of the 70 years of the generation of 70 that is coming on May the 14th, 1948 to May 14th, 2018, which is clearly, clearly, clearly the 70th year. There's no way to say it's not. It's not any way to push it out past it or, you know, we missed a day or whatever. It is exactly a 70-year fulfillment, and this is what the bottom line says. The full peace plan is expected to be revealed after the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem on May the 14th. That is the news. Now, I would like to share with you more than this the excitement of the coming of our king, which is about as close as the hair on my arms is standing up right now. The hair on the back of my neck is standing up. Ah, the spirit is strong. The spirit is all over this message, brothers and sisters. <laughs> it's all over this message. Now, let me bring this document that I just wrote. It's like eight pages long, and it has to do with something Sister Gigi told me the other day, which was something that was written in the Dead Sea Scrolls that I had to find proof of. And brothers and sisters, you're not going to believe this. This is just, it'll, it's going to blow your mind, all right? And so let's read. Here we go. I'm going to read it to you. And you can look this up. And, I'll, and I'm going to post the, the link to this uh, study on the Dead Sea Scrolls and I'll post a link to one of the books that they uh, uh, um, attribute to identifying along with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, I'm not advocating this particular book. I'm not saying it's something we should, you know, get involved with reading. It's a 2,000-page book, and it, it, it's called the... I'll, I'll read on. I'll read on, and then I'll leave the links. Here we go. You're going to be blessed. This is a blessing because it comes right out of, it's out of something that was founded. Here we go. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Bless this reading. Bless your brothers and bless my brothers and sisters. And, and of course, all of us in the body in Jesus name right now. The Dead Sea Scrolls have revolutionized the study of the Bible, early Judaism and early Christianity. Dead Sea Scrolls, Michael Wise, 1996. Here are some facts about the discovery and publication taken from Dead Sea Scrolls, Michael Weiss. Uh, Michael Weiss. Dead Sea Scrolls Facts 100 BC, the vast majority of the scrolls were written in the first century BC. 1947 AD, the first scrolls were found in the Judean desert. 1948, the first scrolls were published. 1947 to 56, 11 caves with scrolls were discovered. In cave number four, which there are 11 caves, but in cave number four, there was 15,000 uh, bits found uh, in that one cave alone. So this is a big deal that they found these uh, in these caves, these scrolls. And exactly at the time, right right there, the first scrolls were published 1948, but they were um, found in 1947. Doesn't say what, what day, uh, you know, month it was, but 1947, brothers and sisters. Come on. That's when the decree came forth that Israel would be a nation, and then six months later, May the 14th, 1948, it became one. That is the fig tree. Chuck Missler, come to find out what he had said, you know, in his uh, objective views, he said that there was no evidence that the fig tree was related to Israel. Now, I find that hard to believe, but that's what Chuck Missler has said. God rest his soul. He's home with the Lord. We'll see him soon. But let's go on. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this segment right here. This is the study. This, this is starting down a ways because I'm not going to read the whole study, but I'm going to give you the important part. Like, you know that you can re rely on, on me to give you the important stuff because this is it. 
This is amazing, brothers and sisters. All right. The full quote of Isaiah that the teacher of righteousness, they have in this in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there is a teacher of righteousness. Interesting. Is commenting on in the Dead Sea Scroll 11Q13. I guess that's the the segment that they that they're quoting from. And this is all due to this 11Q13 study. So what you're about to hear is referring to the Jubilee. This is where we're going to get into it. This is awesome. This is going to blow your mind. <laughs> all right. I have it, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not in, all right. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he's, he's got, in parentheses, this is, I guess, the Michael Weiss or whoever is doing the, the review, uh, is upon me, and he's got in parentheses, Isaiah. Of course it's Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, this is what Isaiah was saying. Because the Lord has anointed me to, uh, uh, anointed me, he has sent me to herald, sent me as a herald of joy to humble, uh, to the humble, I'm sorry. Let me, let me read this again. Let me read it again. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me as a herald of joy to the, to the humble, to bind up the wounded of heart, to proclaim release to the captives, liberation to the imprisoned, to proclaim a year of the Lord's favor. This is also the second part of 11Q13. It will be proclaimed at the end of days concerning the captives. Its interpretation is that he, God, will assign them, the captives, people of God, to the sons of heaven and to the inheritance of Melchizedek, which I believe truly is the order of the high priesthood, which represents Jesus. Okay? So for he, God, will cast their, the captives' lot among or amid the portions of Melchizedek, or Jesus, all right, who will return them their Canaan and will proclaim to them liberty, forgiving them the wrongdoings of their iniquities. Make a note of that word, iniquities, of their iniquities, right? These are the peoples of God that... Um, uh, is spoken about in Daniel that will, you know, 70 years are determined to hold back and refrain the nation against nation from coming against these peoples of God and the holy city. And once it's finished and it's coming to a finish, brothers and sisters, the 70 years, then it's a time for forgiving them their wrongdoing of their iniquities. Make a note of that. That's important because of what I'm about to read further on. This is just a thought now, and here we go. Don't kill the messenger for thinking outside the box. That's what I'm doing. But could part of these iniquities possibly be covering up the true time of the start of the new moon? That Isaiah chapter thir uh, 1, verse 13 and 14 suggests. Let me read it. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. What did he just say up here? What did he just say up here? Right up here. It says, Melchizedek will return them their Canaan them, them there, Canaan, and will proclaim to them liberty, forgiving them, that's the big one, forgiving them the wrongdoings of their iniquities. Brothers and sisters, this sticks out. I don't know. I'm not saying one way or the other. I, I can believe, just like you believe, I can believe the new moon is the dark moon with the sliver. That's what I've been taught. That's what I believe. That's my foundational thought, okay? I can't just throw thoughts out that it's taken years to to believe on, and all of a sudden some guy comes up and gives you the the uh, a documented point uh, in a video that's been doing it for I guess a year or so or more. I don't know how long he actually. I don't know how long that this uh, brother Michael Shabbat uh, Biblical Studies has been has been doing these videos. 
But the fact is, he's got a point, and I, I implore you, as I did last week, you need to watch the video. It's on my channel. If I forget to post it, it's on my channel. You'll, you'll find it. But it's an important video, if nothing more than for the thought of what I'm about to share with you and how it all connects into the big picture of our leaving shortly. Okay? We don't know the day of the hour, but it's almost pinpointing it. Almost. All right? Remember, there's so many places on the earth that one person's day is the next day on the other side of the earth. Okay? So who's going to know? Not one person's going to know the day or that hour. It's going to happen at a moment when we think not. It's just going to happen. But this is what, what we're looking for is a time when we think not or a time that is coming that we believe we're going to know roughly the moments just before we're going to get excited and we're kind of getting excited now. All right? So bear with me. So forgiving them the wrongdoings, this is what happens at the time of the 70s. He's going to forgive them and he's going to take care of them, is he not? It's, it tells you, alas, for the time of Jacob's trouble has come, right? And they will be saved out of it. So here we go. All those that are found written in the book, remember that. So the thought is that maybe these iniquities that they're being forgiven of partly is for covering up by teaching, remember the teaching all comes from the ancient sages and the Pharisees and Sadducees, right? Any kind of a cover-up that they would eventually uh, bring about through teachings and otherwise. It's just a thought, so don't kill me. Here we go. Anyway, I implore you, watch that video because it kind of connects into what I'm about to say here. And it's very, 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 very possible that this is what we're looking at. Because... Who knows? We can't say. But anyway, verse 14 of Isaiah 1 uh, says this. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. This is God speaking. Your new moons. What does that mean? Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth? If they're celebrating their new moons on the wrong time, that would make a total lot of sense right now. If we've been told that the sighting of the new moon is the sliver, and God is saying here in Isaiah, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. <laughs> what does that mean? He's the one that devised the moon, the sun, and the stars, and he's the one that, uh, you know, has everything uh, happening off of the Abib and, and uh, the new, new year count. If you're wrong on the count of Nisan, you're going to be wrong on the count every year. So it's just interesting how this is laying out like that. So it says, they are, they are trouble unto me. <laughs> I am weary to bear them. I mean, come on, brothers and sisters. So anyway, leave that alone. Perhaps we're totally wrong here. It, it's possible that the, the new moon is the dark moon and the sliver of the, you know, the sliver is the first scene, you know, cited that, that tells you it's a new moon. That's the beginning of the month. There's many calendars and many people that go along with that theory. Probably the majority. Probably most of the people watching this video, including me, <laughs> that I'm making the video. But I have to look at the evidence that could be, have somehow been covered up. You see? So just be aware of it. If nothing else, you don't have to believe that the full moon is the new moon. But if it is, and that's the most important part of the video, if it is. Remember that. Okay, back to the study of the Dead Sea Scrolls, 11Q13. Interpretation of Isaiah by the Teacher of Righteousness, 61.1. Uh, um, the Teacher of Righteousness quotes three passages of Scripture, Leviticus 25.13, Deuteronomy 15.2, and Isaiah 61, which he feels are connected and then goes on to give his interpretation in the last paragraph above. Notice the teacher of righteousness identifies the Lord's favor. That's what he said, the Lord's favor, the year of the Lord's favor. As Melchizedek's favor. Thus substituting, I'm going to get to this book in a second. Thus substituting Melchizedek in place of the Lord in the scripture passage given above in the King James translation of Isaiah 61. This substitution reverses the very error of using 
Lord to dis, uh, to designate Melchizedek uh, Melchizedek discussed in the Urantia book Ur, Urantia U R A N T I A book now so that you can look look into this extra biblical book I'm going to place the link uh, which is a Wikipedia link so you can go and uh, you know, I'm not agreeing to the book, and I'm just saying it's for thought and and to look at to get the basis of what this book is saying. And then you, you know, we can question that book, but it's an interesting study. You need to go there and do that little study, and I will place the link underneath this this video. So, this mutual understanding between the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Urantia book collaborates the Urantia book and also establishes the teacher as a valid source of accurate prophetic information. Now, when you study a little bit about this Urantia book, and I found out that it's a 2,000 pages, it's a 2,000 page book, 775 pages deal with the life of Jesus Christ in his early days and up through, and this was given to a, a man that would go into, not, a, not even a trance, he was sleeping uh, uh, very, uh, you know, he was going very deep and his wife couldn't wake him up out of his sleep and so she got a doctor involved and then it created a foundation and it's called the Urantia Foundation and it was a, a thing that took over 10 years and over 250 times for this man uh, that was in a deep sleep giving information to questions. It was kind of like, um, uh, what's the guy, I can't think of the guy's name. Oh, anyway. He was a great, he was one of the seers, uh, what was his name? Ah, I can't remember. Anyway, it's not important. The most important thing here is it's an extra biblical book that has something to do with Christ in it. And they believe that it, and it deals with, you have to go and look at it. I'm not going to go on to it. Anyway, it talks about the Urantia book in this, in this little uh, segment of, of this man's study of, of, the, um, of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So, okay. So it's identifying with something that was written, and this book was written between 1924 and 1935, something like that. It took 10 years to write when he finally got it going. So anyway, so in, additional, in, a, in, in addition, since this verse of Isaiah is embedded in a messianic end-of-age uh, scriptural text, we can also deduce that Melchizedek is identified by the teacher as the Messiah who comes at age's end and the in the Old Testament more evident evidence that Melchizedek is the Messiah is presented just below in the remaining analysis of 11 Q 13 the Dead Sea Scrolls the teacher tells us that this is the teacher of righteousness in the actual Dead Sea Scrolls the teacher of righteousness or the teacher tells us that these verses apply to the future final end of age when Melchizedek comes and literally releases the faithful Christians and Jews who are being held captive by the hostile leaders and nations of that time. It's close to what we're what we're looking at, isn't it brothers and sisters? Close to the time that we're looking at right now. We're definitely held hostage in a way by hostile leaders and nations who are the heads of the nations, right? Armies and, you know, man makes war and, you know, but man himself is not evil. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Man himself is um, more apt to make, to make peace than war, all right? But the heads of nations and, the, and those evil, wicked uh, people that are, uh, over these nations will cause disturbances and cause, you know, the people that are enlisted in their armies, which are required by law, you know, to, once they're in there, they are basically owned. That's why we call them GIs. You call them government issue. All right. So anyway, back to this. So Me Melchizedek frees them and reunites these remnants in Canaan thus restoring a reunified Israel. The teacher continues, and brothers and sisters, this is interesting, this is where the meat of this video is. <laughs> you ready for this? 
So remember what I just said about the new moon. The new moon was on April the 29th and 30th, which would end if the Jubilee had been pushed out the one month for whatever reason, okay? And it happens to be that Nissan one, of course, if Nissan one falls on the new moon or which is looked at as the full moon, and that was on the 29th and 30th of April, then this next tidbit is going to blow your mind. So here it is. And this is in the Dead Sea Scrolls 11Q13. And this thing, the release of captives, which is, I believe, our rapture, okay, for those who will be raptured out, and also it's the time of Jacob's trouble, because when we're raptured out, this is the, also the release and the giving back of the, the people remaining to the Canaan land, which will become strong, which it is at this point evidently heading towards. And this thing, the release of captives, will occur, this is in the Dead Sea Scrolls, brothers and sisters, will occur in the first week of the Jubilee that follows nine Jubilees. Did you get that? So, brothers and sisters, to be clear, the Jubilee that follows the ninth Jubilee is the tenth. We have just finished, according, accordingly, the tenth Jubilee. If only, according to what Michael Shabbat Biblical Studies has revealed, if that's the case. <laughs> If you haven't watched it, please go and watch it. In it, he shows us that the new moon is the full moon. And if, I have to keep saying if, because it's just the way I'm looking at it, but if this has been kept or hidden from popular belief, which goes back to what I was just sharing about the iniquities that God forgives, Right? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Read that. And we were wrong about the new moon, as we have been taught by scholars and leaders for centuries now. And I mean, and I must say, <laughs> not I mean, but I must say, if this is the case, if, there's always the if at this point. I can't thus say it the Lord it. But I will say, if this is the case, and that full moon is the new moon, brothers and sisters, we're on our way out. No matter what, we're on our way out. Okay? It doesn't matter that it, you can go with it whichever way you want. We're on our way out. Period. Final. End of story. All right? Because the peace plan is getting ready to be revealed. All right? On or after, just maybe after. So after the embassy opens and is, you know, the ribbon's cut on the 14th, maybe that day, maybe the next day, but the ribbon will be cut. Let's just say that, all right? The new embassy will be opened. That opens up. The next step will be moving or building the third temple. That's the effort. That's the movement. That's what everything is moving toward, okay? The temple coin that they're minting with, with Cyrus and Trump on. Okay, all right? So, if this is the case, then the one week that is written in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and if this information is just now being brought to light, which is just like God, you know, revealing something at the last moment, right? We've all been trying to see what would be revealed just before the rapture happens, which the completion of the 70 is a sure thing, all right? There's the generation, the fig tree generation becoming 70, exactly 365 and a quarter years <laughs> okay 70 of them so if this is the case in the one week that is written in the Dead Sea Scrolls and if this information is just now being brought to light for our encouragement and edification then the first week after the 10th Jubilee has ended is May the 7th and eighth brothers and sisters it's Monday and Tuesday it's prior to the 10th of May which on my calendar has Ascension Day which is on the June the, the uh, Jewish calendar is the 40th day of the count of the Omer all right 
that's when Jesus ascended. And he said, go and wait for the Holy Spirit. The next thing up would be Pentecost. That's the 21st. Maybe that's 21-0. I don't know. But I'll tell you this much. Brothers and sisters, because of what Gigi told me the other day by some man that she knows that's a brother in the Lord that gave her this, I went to look it up to find it because I couldn't just say, well, a brother told Gigi that I'm telling you that in the, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, I had to find it out for myself. And here it is. Here it is. It's written in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, you know, there'll be many probably that say, you know, those Dead Sea Scrolls, they could have been written. And, you know, there's people. There's, there's, the, there's all, always going to be all the camps, okay? Bottom line is, let's look at the information and think about it and get excited because we're at the day where there ain't too many more days. It could be tonight. It doesn't have to wait for May 7th or 8th, but that is a week. That is a week after the ninth, uh, the jubilee after the ninth jubilee is the way it's per, is the way it's said, and it's a week after if the if the full moon is the beginning. All right, and when you read Isaiah one, thirteen and fourteen, it makes sense that they would have done something that God would have hated their feasts. If they're celebrating them at the wrong time, then God hates them. All right, God gave them specific timing to do these things if they're off on their timing then then he's hating them okay his soul hates them so brothers and sisters i'm excited you should be excited we're close that's going to be the end of this video for this week but i'm going to give you the sound that we're all waiting to hear hopefully it'll be coming from the heavens very shortly bear with me sisters enjoy your day god bless you i love you i know we're close rejoice god bless you all see you real soon maybe tonight maybe the next moment or so awesome i'll place the links below the one about the the um the book there and the the other as well okay god bless you brother john out